Welcome everyone to Talisman, the Magical Quest Game, Revised 4th Edition. Today I'll be playing solo. I'll be choosing two characters, and um, we will see who comes out on top. The object of the game is to get to the very center at the Crown of Command. Once there, you will have the ability to cast the Command spell which essentially kills off all the rest of the players. In order to get to the center of the board, to the crown of command, you'll have to get your player character, these miniatures, that go along with a corresponding character card with all of their stats and so on and special abilities. Everyone starts on the outer region. This is the middle and inner region. So, there are a few different ways you can do it. You can go through the Sentinel here. Uh, he's this mighty warrior guarding the bridge across to the middle region. His strength is nine, so he's pretty tough to beat until later in the game. Uh, you can fight through him to get there. You could go to the tavern, and if you roll an appropriate um, roll, you may be offered to ferry across with a boatman over to the temple. Or the other option is if you have an axe, you can build a raft within the woods or forest and just go right across to the adjacent space. Those are the three basic ways. There's a few other ways that may pop up. But essentially, once you've made it across to the middle, uh, you can go around to the portal of power and you'll have to enter there using your strength or craft ability. Whatever is higher for you is the suggested thing you should do. If you successfully break through the portal of power, you enter the plane of peril. You will proceed to do the final trials, I should say, in order to get to the crown of command. Now, in order to enter the crown of command, you have to pass through the valley of fire, and you can only do this if you have a talisman, a magical object, and it says on the card you may only enter the valley of fire if you have one of the fabled talismans. The most basic way to get a talisman to go to the Warlock's Cave, roll a die, and accept a quest, ranging from take one life from another character, kill one enemy, deliver one follower, or so on and so forth. I'll explain what each of these decks are. This is the adventure deck over here, and most of the spaces on the board say draw one card, or draw two cards, or three, and when it says that, you will draw from here and encounter whatever is on the adventure card. There could be enemies, strangers, places, events, tons of stuff can happen. Then you've got spells. Certain characters uh, can have spells. Well, everyone can, but you have to have a certain craft level in order to obtain and use spells. Um, this is the purchase deck. It has a lot of items ranging from weapons to armor and other helpful tools. These are alignment cards. They have a good and evil side. You can, at certain points, be changed from your original alignment that's printed on your character card to either evil or good. And then, of course, the talismans I showed you. Now, the red cones indicate your strength bonuses, which you can level up over time throughout the game by defeating enemies. Um, if you kill enough enemies of a certain type, whether it's a strength enemy or a craft enemy, on the card it will say strength 4 or whatever or craft 3. You defeat that in battle, you take it as a trophy and once you have enough points say a craft 3 plus a craft 4 you can turn those in. It's a total of 7 that gives you one craft bonus. So blue craft, red strength, green is your life you lose all your lives, your character dies and unless someone has been on the crown of command when you die, you basically lose all of your inventory and followers, and then you can pick up a new character and start over, essentially. All your stuff gets dropped on the space where you died. These are Fate, which will allow you to re-roll in almost any situation where you had a bad roll that you didn't like, and something bad's about to happen to you. You could spend one of these if you have them available, and then re-roll. But you have to accept the die roll of that second roll. Um, you can't continuously spend more and more fate. 
these are gold you can use to buy things and spend on certain cards and whatnot. Uh, there are a few different locations where you can do various things besides draw a card, some of them based on your alignment, some they give you a few different options like going to a shop or going to a doctor to heal or just randomly rolling and hoping for the best but also risking certain things like becoming a toad which these miniatures are. In most cases you get turned into a toad for three turns and we'll find out what happens to a toad if that happens in this game, but basically it's not great to be a toad. First thing we do in this game, we pick characters. Now today, since I'm playing solo and I want to make this a nice brief game, well, Talisman's never really brief. Like, even if you're playing with just two people, the quickest game you might have is maybe an hour and a half. But generally, when you're playing with mm, two people, it could take two plus hours. However, it's just me playing. Either way, the point is, just gonna pick two characters at random and see who wins. Whether or not they die, that remains to be seen. But our first character we have is the troll. And our second character, none other than the thief. I'll go over their uh, abilities and craft and strength levels and fate and all that. Thief. The Thief starts with Strength 3, Craft 3, he's pretty balanced. Special abilities, he may take one gold or object of, a, of his choice from a character that he lands on. Whenever you visit the market, market day or village, you may take one card of your choice from the purchase deck for free. He's got two fate, four life, and everyone starts with one gold. He starts in the city, his alignment is neutral. Now the troll is pretty lopsided, some people don't really like to play him because he's so unbalanced, but he can be fun if you find a lot of uh, strength enemies to fight. Because his strength is 6, but his craft's only 1. His fate is 1, his life is 6, he starts in the crags, his alignment is neutral, and his special abilities. You need not roll in the crags unless you wish to, if you choose to roll you must accept the result. And a lot of things can happen in the crags. Most of them not so great. One of them is pretty good. So it's never necessarily a bad thing to just skip rolling at the crags and just playing it safe. Whenever you roll a six for your move, you may regenerate instead of moving. If you choose to regenerate, heal one life and your turn immediately ends. All right, so first thing we do, we grab a couple or however many fate your character has. Two for the thief, one for the troll. In the base game, there's a lot of expansions for this game, which I actually own all of them, and it's pretty awesome. I played solo the other day, just on my own time, and uh, it was pretty fun. I played with all the expansions. I played with a few friends on different uh, variations of the expansions, different combinations, but anyway, today just the base game. And actually, this is a new set that I bought. I have the an older set, and I just bought this one just to get a nice, fresh one. So this will be fun. I'm christening the board. Just literally just unboxed this moments ago. All right, so the thief has four life. But another great thing about the troll is that he's kind of a juggernaut, and he starts with six life. So... That's a nice advantage to have, especially when you're a strength character who just wants to go beat things up and kill lots of stuff. And uh, also great because he doesn't have great craft, and if he gets beat up on some craft enemies right away, he can likely recover. Uh, at least have a chance. Alright, so I've already shuffled everything, uh, other than these that don't really need to be shuffled, the spells and the adventure deck are shuffled and we're all ready oh not quite ready actually need to get the character pieces actually why don't we roll to see who goes first here's for the thief and here's for the troll all right thief begins the game so the basic way to start a turn is you're going to roll a die and you have the option now to move five spaces that way or five spaces that way so if i look here it says draw one card of the planes and also another thing to note is do not draw a card if there's already one in this space. So, um, yeah, if 
you fight a monster and don't kill it, it will stay there. If it's a place or a stranger that says to stay there, it'll just be face up on here and you can encounter it again when you come through here. Or if another character comes there, they can encounter it. Sometimes they must encounter it, sometimes it's something optional. Uh, but in any case, if it says draw one card, there's only ever going to be one card on that space, with a few exceptions, as if, uh, as in, if someone drops all their stuff because they just died or lost something or ditched something um, on that space. But anyway, we can draw one at the fields also. And so, to avoid being too close to the troll, because he could, if he rolled a one next turn, he could land on me and fight me, and I wouldn't want to do that. His strength's much higher than mine, and he could potentially make me lose a life or take a gold. So I'm not going to want to risk fighting the troll right now as the thief. So I'm going to go this way and draw one card. And what's the first card of the day? It's a beautiful ring! This magic object adds one to your strength and one to your craft. Alright, so I'm just going to put object right over here and followers down here. Oh yeah, objects you can only have four at a time, uh, unless you get a mule, then you can have another four for each mule you have. So you get four uh, item slots, object slots, and then the uh, followers are unlimited. You can have an unlimited amount of followers. Most of them do good things, there's a couple that do not so great things. Um, Alright, so add one to your strength and one to your craft. That's a nice advantage to have. But I like to place them, and the rules say to place them on the object. That way, if you ever lose the object, you know that you lost that strength and craft because of that object, and it wasn't a bonus that you had from when you leveled up. So now, the thief has a strength of four and a craft of four for all intents and purposes. All right, and that's pretty much the end of his turn. <clears throat> Very good turn. And now we'll go to the troll. Who rolls a four? One, two, three, four to the city, or one, two, three, four to draw one at the sentinel. Now the city, I could either go to the doctor and heal up to two lives at the cost of one gold each, but seeing as I don't have to, I don't have any lives to heal, I'm at full health. I wouldn't. That wouldn't apply. I could go to the alchemist, discard any, any number of objects you have, and gain one gold for each. Uh, I have no objects, so that wouldn't apply. And anytime you go here, you can't just sit here and do nothing. You have to do one of these three options. And the third option is to visit the Enchantress and roll one die with the result of one turned into a toad. Two, lose a strength. Three, lose a craft. Four, gain a craft. Five, gain a strength. Or six, gain a spell. Another thing to note, even if I roll the six, I have to have a minimum craft of three in order to even hold a spell and use one. And the troll only has one, so he needs to level up twice more with his craft in order to even have a spell. Now, if you have four to five craft, you can have two spells. Six plus craft, you can have three. The max you can ever have is three. All right, so he could either go to the city, as I said, which would result in him rolling and risking becoming a toad or something like that which isn't great, or he could just go one, two, three, four to the Sentinel and just draw a card and see what happens. I think the smart thing for him is going to be to draw a card. And it's Raiders, a band of Raiders. This is an event. A band of Raiders attacks you and steals all your gold. They immediately stash the gold at the Oasis, place the gold there, and retreat. they then retreat to their hideout, place the Raiders on the discard pile. Okay. Lose one gold, put it on the Oasis space and the raiders are discarded. All right then. <clears throat> so that was not such a great turn for the troll, but now we return to the thief, who rolls a three. He could go to the hills and draw one, or to the ruins and draw two. So he's gonna make it interesting and see what happens here. Now, you'll notice, as I've drawn a goblin and a healer, we look in the bottom left corner, bottom right corner of these cards, there's a little uh, number that's the encounter number. So the lower the number, that card goes first. So in order to get to the healer, which I'm not really going to need to use anyway, and his thing is that he heals up to two lives per visit for free for any character, uh, I won't really need to use him in this case, but it's maybe good for the future. 
but I will have to fight this strength two goblin first in order to even get to that guy. And my strength is four, so I have a decent chance. But how combat works is first I'm gonna roll for my attack roll and I add my strength to it. So four plus three is seven and his two plus six is eight. Ooh, so he actually beat me by one. But with the odds kind of in my favor on this, Unless I rolled less than three, unless I rolled less than four, then um, basically I need a five or six in order to beat him. Uh, is it worth it or just lose a life? Well, let's do an example of fate here. So I'm going to roll for the thief, re-roll, and I got a six, so I beat him. And if it were a tie, a standoff would be in play, meaning nothing happens and the turn immediately ends. But I defeated the goblin, so now I set him off to the side of the thief, and he is now a trophy until I can turn him in with another uh, five strength points at least. Now, if you have, let's say, a total of eight strength points and you want to turn him in, you can do that. Um, however, if you were to save them up and try to get to 14, if you had a pretty round number of 14, you could turn them in for two, but just because you had eight strength, it doesn't matter. You're still only going to get one level up. Um, so that extra point of strength trophy you had doesn't count for anything. It's just kind of a waste, but when you need strength, you need strength. So on to the troll again. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six to the forest. One, two, three, four, five, six to the woods. Draw one or roll one and risky business. So I think he'll just go to the woods and keep trying the deck. And it's a guide, a follower. You need not roll the die in the chasm, crags, or forest unless you wish to. If you choose to roll, you must accept the result. That's a pretty good follower to have. It's not too great, but it can get you out of sticky situations, potentially. All right, back to the thief. One, two, three, four, woods. One, two, three, four, village. So he could steal something from the village and um, he could take something from the purchase deck. One card of your choice from the purchase deck. Hmm. Interesting. It says card. I think on the older version it may have said object. Can't be can't be sure, but one card would mean I could take a mule if I want. Which I might do, but actually it might be better to get an axe or armor. Hmm. But anyway, so here all the four, one, two, three, four to the woods, and well, let's go to the village. Let's take a card from the purchase deck. So, since it says card, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a mule. Why not? Now I'm gonna get a ton of objects. I have eight slots, lots of room. Now, when he does that, uh, the rules, I'm trying to figure out, does it mean that once he does that, his turn's over? I don't think so. I think that just means he does that and then he encounters the space. I'm pretty certain. So the only thing he can do is roll there. And six is gain one spell, which he can do, and now I'm gonna do it. Normally you keep these hidden from the other players, but since I'm playing both, I'll do my best to simulate that this guy doesn't know what this guy has as best as I can, I guess, until I come up with some other rule, maybe, in, I don't know. Anyway, is what it is when you're playing solo, but Healing. Cast as required by casting it on yourself or any other character. The recipient is healed up to his life value. Noise. I'll just keep him face down so I know it hasn't been cast yet. Not so much for secrecy's sake. All right. But that's a nice spell to have, especially when you get the, you know, down to like one or two lives and you're like, uh-oh, I might die. You cast healing, you're back in the game. All right. Back to the troll. He rolls a one, so he can go to the fields and draw one, or plains and draw one. I'd say get away from the city as much as possible, unless you're willing to risk it, or have another reason to be there. Draw one card. 
It's only a craft two shadow, but I only have craft one, so it's still not great. But here's for me, or the troll rather. He's got four. Here's for the shadow, who has seven. Is it worth trying to reroll? Probably not. So the troll will take a hit this time. And the shadow will remain on the planes. And now going back to the thief. He rolls a two for movement. One, two to the graveyard or to the forest. Now he's a neutral character, so he could pay a gold at the graveyard where it says neutral, replenish up to your fate value at the cost of one gold each. He has one gold, he's missing one fate. That's not a bad idea. Or he could go to the forest and in most cases, it's not so great. Only th great thing really is a six, which says a ranger guides you out, gain one craft. I think he'll do the safe thing, go to the graveyard, pay his one gold. And bingo was his name -o. Get a bit. Back to the troll. Four. One, two, three, four fields. One, two, three, four hills. Now, I think the troll wants to go beat up the thief to make this interesting and maybe take his ring if possible. So he's gonna move a little closer that way in order to kind of make a stance against the thief. This is a 1v1 duel after all. It's a guide. Wait a minute. That's two guides, nice. Another great thing about guides, they often come in handy when you get to the vampire's tower in the inner region there's a good chance you're gonna lose up to three lives if you roll a certain way. Like one to two, you lose one life, two to three, you lose two lives, five to six, you lose three lives, or you can sacrifice followers in order to avoid the loss of life. So, having those guides, which are semi-useful during the game, but not that at all useful when they're in here, when you're in here, those are great sacrifices. So at the end of the day, the more guides you have, the better for that situation. You don't feel as bad because they're not that useful. All right, so Thief rolls a five. One, two, three, four, five to the fields. One, two, three, four, five to the plains. All right, he, well, is he scared of the, the is he scared of the troll? I mean, he has a healing spell, so even if the troll beats him up, what's the troll going to do? Take his ring? I mean, he could, but... Uh, yeah, the thief's still kind of scared. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, and draw one adventure card. And yet again, another strength to goblin. This is a brand new deck, and I did shuffle it, but who knows. Anyway, another strength to goblin to my strength of four. So, thief rolls a five making his nine and the goblin rolls a four making his six so the goblin is defeated i have two goblin trophies i'm a goblin slayer all right back to the troll oh he rolls a six so he could heal that life he lost or if he wants to go he could go one two three four five six draw one one two three four five six draw one yeah why not let's take a turn and heal that life back up for the troll and that's it. Now back to the thief. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Draw one. One, two, three, four, five. Graveyard again. Nothing to do at the graveyard, so it would essentially be me doing nothing there. Uh, in that case, I would be allowed to do nothing since neutral is replenish fate, and I don't have to do that. And yeah. So one, two, three, four, five. I would go to the woods <clears throat> and draw one card. Ooh, that's a nice follower, the Gnome. You need only roll one die when opening the Portal of Power by craft and two dice in the mines. You need not roll the die in the crags unless you wish to. If you accept a roll, you must accept. If you choose to roll, you must accept the result, and you may evade creatures and characters in the hills. So, that's nice. Uh, the gist of it is that it's easier for you to get through this door. It's easier. For you to go this path and you're safe in the hills this space that space and that's about it for hills i think yeah there's two hill spaces that you would be kind of in the sanctuary that's a nice follower to have especially if you have a lot of craft 
All right, and now on to the troll. He rolls a one, he could go to the chapel. He has no gold to spend on life. For neutral characters, it's like the graveyard except for life. You can heal up to your life value at the cost of one gold each. But instead, he'll make something happen here and draw a card. It's a fairy. A fairy seeks a champion. For the first good character landing here, she will grant one of the following wishes of his choice, then vanish to the discard pile. Gain one spell, gold, strength, craft, life, or fate, or teleport to any other space in this region. That's nice, but I'm neutral. Or the troll is neutral, rather. So nothing happens. That stays there until a good character comes to get it. Which neither of us are currently, but could be changed at the village. Alright, and so the thief. We could go to the hills and draw one, or go to the tavern. Hmm. So at the tavern, one is get drunk and collapse in a corner, miss a turn. Two, get tipsy and fight a farmer with strength three. Three, gamble and lose one gold. Four, gamble and win one gold. Five, a wizard offers to teleport you to any other space in this region as your next move. Or six, a boatman offers to ferry you to the temple as your next move. So I could risk it with the roll, or I could simply draw a card, and if it's something terrible like a dragon or a demon, I could avoid it because I have the gnome and I'm in the hills. And what do you know? Speak of the devil. Well, the demon would have made more sense, but dragon. My strength is only four, his is seven. Not great odds, so I will evade it and leave the dragon sitting there for now. That would be a better target for the troll at this point. Slight disadvantage for the troll, but not that much. All right, back to the troll. He rolls another six. Eh, I can't heal, so we'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six, forest. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, woods. Forest, I could just do nothing there with the guide, but no, I want something to happen, so I'm gonna draw one in the woods. I think I need to shuffle these again, because uh, that's another dragon. But the troll's gonna fight him. So here's the troll, six plus, two is eight. Seven plus, one is eight. So it's a standoff. But why wouldn't he use a fate and try to beat him? Because of that, actually. That is unfortunate, because now the troll loses a life and the dragon is there. So. I think I will shuffle this just a little more because I'm seeing a lot of duplicates popping up already. Don't want this to be too non-random in the game of randomness. That'll make me feel a little better. Alright, now back to the thief. A six, one, two, three, four, five, six crags. One, two, three, four, five, six healer and since that's a draw two spot and there's one there already we draw one strength four serpent to my uh, thieves strength of four four to four here's for the thief that's a five so that's nine and that's eight so he beats the serpent and now he has the option at the end of his turn which is now he can turn in his trophies, which will equal 2 plus 2 plus 4 is 8. So that's a slight loss there, but close enough to 7, whatever. Call it good and gain a strength. Ooh, you just place it right next to your strength number there, so you know that is a bonus you got from killing stuff, basically. Alright, back to the troll. One, two, three, draw a card. One, two, three, draw a card at the fields or fields. Uh, he's not scared of these dragons. He's going to go over here and draw. The marsh will remain here for the rest of the game. Whenever you land here, if your strength is less than five, you must miss one turn, but his strength's six, so he's fine. Now, the thief. One, two, three, draw one. One, two, three, draw one. Plains or fields, why not go towards the fields over here? Because then, you know, he's close to the village. Craft one Lemur. It's an enemy spirit. My craft's four. Let's go. Four, two, three, 
two is six. One, one is two. He easily destroys the one here. Troll. Five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Tavern or Crags? Let's go to the tavern, maybe get drunk, but we'll see what happens. And what do you know? I get tipsy and fight a farmer with strength three. I have no fate to try it again. So, here's for my troll's strength seven, and here's for the three plus two is five, so he's safe. He gets no benefit from it, he just doesn't lose a life. Um, now, on to the thief again. Three, one, two, three, draw a card and face the healer if I want. Two, three, don't need to go to the graveyard. So let's draw a card. Maybe get a little too close to the troll, but whatever. And he gets a helmet. And that's nice because if you are defeated in battle, just lost a life, if you're only six, then the helmet defends you. You don't lose that life even though you still lost the battle. So it's nice to have armor at any time, really. All right, troll. One, two, three, four, five. Marsh, do nothing. One, two, three, four, five. Fields, draw one. Let's go here. Draw one card. Specter of craft three to my craft of one. Here's for the troll, and he's definitely pretty much going to lose. Definitely indeed. And so he loses another life, and we go back to the thief. Rolls a one. Draw one, draw one, plains fields. Let's get a well. If we go closer towards there, it's closer to the village and the troll. Potentially, at some point, could jump on the troll and steal. Well, he has nothing to steal, but anyway, whatever. Closer to the village. Solomon's crown, add two to your craft. Holy moly, that's a good one to have. And my goodness, I may be able on the thief's behalf to rush this game because now he has a total craft of six which means he can automatically enter the portal of power and because essentially when you're entering a portal you have to roll equal to or less than your chosen ability to get through so since i have the gnome i only have to roll one die to get through there instead of normally two and i'm at six so one die can go no higher than six so I automatically get to the point of peril. And then I only have to roll two dice in the mines. So if I rolled uh, uh, you know, six or less, then I can get through, basically. All right, that's nice. Thief's having all the luck so far. Let's see what the troll can do here. Ah, he rolls a three, one, two, three, one, two, three. He doesn't really need to go to the graveyard, so he'll go towards the healer, which he actually could use, but first he has to encounter the Potion of Strength, which is nice for him. He's gonna now have... The Potion of Strength's a magic object. When you drink the potion, it will increase your strength by two until the end of the turn. Once you've drunk it, place it on the discard pile. So it's a nice one-time use thing when you really need it. And he lands on the healer, and he is down two lives right now, so he will get those back for free. Yeah. Alright, Thief. Rolls a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Woods or plains. Why don't we go towards the woods <clears throat> and draw one? Storm event. The storm sweeps through this region. All the characters in this region must miss one turn. The storm then abates the discard pile. Alright, well, everyone here is in the same region, so essentially that's nothing. Now on to the troll. Five is rolled. So, one, two, three, four, five, draw one at the plains. One, two, three, four, five, draw one at the fields. He's got to track down this pesky thief and take some of his stuff even though now they're almost equal in strength. But anyway, he goes to the fields, draws one card, and it's, the, oh, this could be a game changer for the troll. Rune Sword, my favorite weapon. No good character may have the Rune Sword. Add one to your strength during battle. When you use the Rune Sword in battle to defeat an enemy or another character and cause them to lose a life, you gain one life. Mm, that is my favorite, because you can just slash people down it adds a little strength in battle, and then you gain lives up the Kazu, potentially. 
All right, this is the, the uh, thief. He could go back to the village, steal some more stuff, or go to the chapel and heal, but he doesn't need to. So, he's gonna go here. He's gonna steal some more stuff from the village. I think this time he'll take an ax to make it a little easier to get across the Storm River. So we put the dice here. And he'll take the ax which will add one to his strength in battle and give him the option to make a raft in the woods or forest. Might just go for the gusto here and try to win this game early with the thief, but the troll may have something to say about it. Oh yeah, but also he has to do something there as well. So he'll roll another spell and he can easily take another spell, which is healing again. My goodness, two healing spells. I need to shuffle this again. But two healing spells? Oh boy, I think the thief may have this one in the bag at this point, but we shall see. Five, four, troll. One, two, three, four, five, chapel. One, two, three, four, five, fields. Chapel's kind of useless to him at this point, so we'll go to fields. He gets an ax too. Not bad to have, for the reasons I just mentioned. Now, thief rolls a four. One, two, three, and four. He's not good, so the fairy doesn't know good. One, two, three, four. Healer doesn't need to heal, but he could benefit from something good if he gets something good. The Book of Spells. You have found the fabled Book of Spells. You gain your full complement of spells according to your current craft, and this gets discarded. Well, his craft is six, so he can have one more spell, and that is Hex. Cast at the start of your turn before you move. Place this card on any space in the outer or middle region not already occupied by a character. It remains for three rounds, complete rounds, after which it is placed on the discard pile. Any character landing on the hex loses a life. So that's uh, helpful somewhat, but not the best spell ever. Troll. Oh, it may be his finally his time to attack. However, looking at this, his strength is now seven and... Thief strength is three, four, five, six. It's a close fight, but the troll would like to get his hands on that ring to really mess with the thief. And I want to show you guys how PvP happens here. So instead of encountering this space and drawing a card to add up to two on this space, we're gonna have the troll attack the thief. So as I said, his strength is six plus the rune sword. You can only use one weapon at a time unless you're the warrior. So we're going to use the Rune Sword, add one to his strength in battle, so that's a total of seven now. And this is three, four, five, plus the axe is six, so it's seven, six. The troll roll first, seven plus, two is nine, thief, six plus, five is eleven. Wow, so the thief actually won and the troll has no rebuttal to that. So I guess the thief with his mule and all of his goodies, he's going to go ahead and take the rune sword. Why not? That is definitely what I would do if I were this player, which I am, I guess, I'm trying to be balanced, but obviously troll done messed up. All right. Well, that happened. Now it's the thief's turn. He rolls a one. He's going to go uh, this way to the fields and draw one card. It's an armor, which is even better than a helmet, because if you roll four, five, or six in a situation where you're about to lose a life due to a battle, then you don't lose that life. And now, how many objects? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have two more slots open. Alrighty then. Well, now on to the troll. He rolls a two, he could go to the tavern, or he could go to the forest. Let's go to the tavern and see what happens here. Uh-oh, get drunk, collapse in the corner, miss a turn. Okay, so basically Thief gets two turns in a row. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six to the marsh. His strength is five, so he basically would do nothing there. Or go to the village and steal another card. And we'll, well, why wouldn't I steal another card? Since it says card. 
And we're gonna take, why not take a raft actually? <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna show you the quickest game of uh, Talisman ever here, potentially. All right, but with the raft, on my next turn, instead of your normal move, you make choose to, cr to cross the river to a space directly opposite the one you're in. Whether you cross or not, place the raft on the discard pile as it cannot be carried with you. So you only get it for one turn, you have to use it. Um, oh, but that turn is now here because the troll missed the turn. So I will just discard it, in other words, put it back in there. And this is the adjacent space, the portal of power. So I stop right there and I draw one card because it says to. Wow. The one thing I had forgotten about already, and I'm a pretty seasoned player of this game. The thing I had forgotten, and I was about to just try to rush through the door and I didn't even have a talisman yet, but guess what? Thief has a talisman. Oh my goodness. That is some timing, because I got all caught up in explaining the game and forgot the most basic rule that you need a talisman. That would have been funny if I got all the way here before realizing it. Anyway, perfect for him. All right, Troll has got some work to do to catch up. So Marsh, do nothing, or fight a craft three specter. I think he'll take the safe route this time. Now we'll go back to the thief. Thief rolls a one. He could go to the castle, which he could heal lives there, doesn't need to, or the Black Knight, he could either pay a gold or lose one life. And that's not so great. So I think, why not make a run for it, see what happens. He's gonna try to go through the portal. Actually, he doesn't have to try because of the gnome thing I explained earlier. See, he's got three, four, five, six, only has to roll one die to get in. And so that's basically an automatic get through the door. <laughs> see what happens in the mines this, this could be interesting all right and now back to the troll who rolls a five one two three four five back to the tavern two three four five crags i think he's just gonna do nothing at the crags for once to avoid any more pain all right now he moves one space at a time in here we go to the mines and it says roll three dice i only have to roll two with a gnome but, and subtract your craft from the total and move directly to whatever the outcome is it says where to go. So I roll two dice, and basically I'm hoping to get a very low number, and I would subtract six from it. I want it to be zero so that I stay at the mines, so essentially I need six or less in order to stay at the mines and next turn go to the next place. And by golly, he got a four. So he stays there, and next turn goes the Vampire's Tower. This may be a quick game, folks. Which will be nice for editing, but anyway. All right, Troll. He rolls a six, doesn't need to regenerate. One, two, three, four, five, six, strength seven dragon. One, two, three, four, five, six, graveyard. Let's fight the dang dragon. 7-7, seven to seven, but he's going to use his Potion of Strength to have a little advantage, so it's 9-7. to seven. And uh, the dragon, okay, so 9 for the troll, plus 3 is 12, 7 plus 1. Alright, so the troll actually beats the dragon. Since the dragon is worth 7 strength, he can turn it in right away at the end of his turn and gain another strength. But now back to to the likely to win thief. He advances to the Vampire's Tower and rolls two, which means he only loses one life or one follower to not lose life. Might as well get rid of the gnome now, no use for him anymore. And now back to the troll. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do this and see what happens here. He gets a shield, which is nice. That's like the armor helmet, but different because you roll a five or six. So it's not quite, a, it's the middle ground between the helmet and armor. Five or six, you don't lose a life in those situations. And he doesn't need a heal, so anyway, that happened. All right, to the pits where he will fight the pit fiends. Roll one die and fight that many pit fiends with strength four, each one by one until Either you are defeated or you defeat all of the pit fiends. You may move on the turn after all pit fiends are defeated. Alright, 
See how many pit fiends we're going to fight? We're going to fight five of them at strength four, starting with the first one. And it looks like my strength, or thief strength is four, five, six. So that's six total. And, uh, six to four. All right, so here's the thief. He's got ten. Ten to ten, that's a standoff. All right, then. Well, he's got a pause there, and he's still going to be fighting five when we come back to his turn. Troll. Rolls a one. Let's just go draw one here. And he's got the magic stream. The magic stream means you get four of these strengths, and they're on there. Anytime someone lands on it, they may take one. And, of course, since you're the first person there, you also get to take one right away. All right. Back to fighting the pit fiends. Here we go. So it's still six to four. So that's a nine, two, six. That's one down, four to go. That's a nine, that's a 15 to, I mean, that was a six plus six is 12. And this is nine, three to go. Uh-oh, that's only seven, and that is seven, so that's a standoff, and there's still three to go. All right, back to the troll. One, two, draw one, one, two, draw one. Let's go here and stay close to the stream. And it's a mercenary, but he has no gold, so basically the mercenary is a follower. If you want to take him, you have to pay him a gold straight up right away, and if not, he just stays on the space waiting for someone to pay him. While he is your follower, he will add three to your strength in battle until the end of your turn. Provided you pay one gold, you may only pay one gold once per turn. So you pay him right away and then pay him each time you want to use him, and he adds three strength, which is nice. But no gold. No dice. All right, so three left. So I still have, the, or Thief still has that strength of six. That's eight. And that is nine. So that's actually a loss. Could either use my armor or just re-roll straight up, but I'll use the armor to see if I don't lose life. Oh, but I only rolled a three, so I do lose life, but I'm not really worried as the thief because I have two healing spells, so. But there's still three to fight when we come back to him. Having a little trouble getting through there. One, two, three, four, five, city. One, two, three, four, five, forest. All right, well. The forest, not so great. City, not so great. Uh, Let's just see what happens if he becomes a toad. Don't roll a one. Oh, six is nice. Gain a spell, but that will mean nothing for the troll. Doesn't have enough craft. All right. On and back to the thief. Still has three pit fiends to fight. Here's for the thief. Here's for the pit fiend. And that is a win for the thief, just barely. Sort of. All right, two left. Here's for the thief. Here's for the pit fiend. Win. One left. Thief. Pit fiend. That's eight to eight. And thief's going to fade it, try to beat him. And he beats him. All right, next turn he gets to go to the Valley of Fire. Back to the troll. Five is mercenary, or draw one at the fields. Let's draw one at the fields. Another dragon. Well, now his strength's eight, nine to seven. Here we go. Here's for the troll. Here's for the dragon. And that's a win for the troll. He turns in another dragon for another strength. So, here we are, Valley of Fire. He just waits there until the next turn, then gets to advance to the crown of command. All right, six for the troll. He doesn't need to heal, so one, two, three, four, five, six, marsh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Draw one of the field. Let's see what's here. Unicorn, add one to your strength, one to your craft. It is a follower. Oh, unicorn's kind of cool. There you go. One to your strength, one to your craft. You put them on the card. Finally, he gained the craft after all this time. Anyway, now, 
thief advances there and gets to roll the command spell. He rolls a five, so if you roll one through three, nothing happens. Four through six, everyone else loses a life. Troll loses a life. Now Troll gets to go. He's got pretty high strength, so if he were to get a talisman and rush his way in, he might be able to catch up to the thief, but it would take a while. He's got to get really lucky. Anyway, Woods or Spectre. Let's go to the woods, and in fact, I think he's wanting to speed this up a bit. He's going to use his axe right now to build a raft. Take that raft, put it over here, next turn he's going to use it. Okay, here comes the thief. He rolls a three, but he's going to use a fate to try to roll four, five, or six, and he does. So another life, life lost by the troll. And now, the troll uses his raft. To advance across to the hidden valley and draw three cards that's what it says to do well what do you know this is quite a nice <laughs> setup here they all have the same encounter number but we have a raft what she doesn't want to use so it's just gonna get discarded anyway a mule adds four more slots and a talisman what do you know this is quite a fun game already and it's only well, it's almost over, and it seems like it all already just begun. But this is fun. All right, so they both have a talisman now, and now all the troll has to do is get in there, and he's got a strength of 10, 11 in battle. So he could thwomp the thief if he makes it in there. The thief's best chance is to kill him off before he gets in there. All right, here comes the thief. And he only rolls a 2 and has no fate. Of course, he has a couple healing spells, but still. All right, now the troll is trying to get through here. One, two, three, draw one, and add. you would add two to anything that attacks you, their attack rolls. One, two, three, he could heal at the doctor, um, but it would cost a gold apiece, so no. Or one, two, three, try to go in. Let's try to go in using strength. Now, the risk here is if he rolls... And his strength is 10. If he were to roll higher than 10 with these two dice, he would lose one of his bonus strength each time that happens. So basically we're hoping for the troll's sake for 10 or less. And he does, he does it. Now he's into the plane of peril. Now the thief only rolls a three, so the troll gets to go again. He's going to try the strength route, the crypt. Subtract your strength from the total of three dice and advance two. The lower the better, so we want ten or less. Ho! Oh, not quite. That's a nine, ten, eleven. Minus ten is one. He moved back one. All right, here's the thief. Rolls a two. Nothing happens. Here's round two for the troll. What do you know? He got an eight, so he's good to go. Now here comes the thief. Oh, didn't roll anything good. Dice with death. Roll two dice for yourself and two for death. If the scores are equal, dice with death again on your next turn. If your score is lower, lose one life and dice with death again on your next turn. If your score is higher, you may move on your next turn. All right, roll two dice for him. He gets a nine, here's for death. He gets a five, so he advances on next turn, but the thief is trying to kill him. Oh, he loses a life. This is intense, ladies and gentlemen. He advances to fight the werewolf in the werewolf den. Now, I roll two dice for the werewolf strength, then fight it. If you lose, lose one life, and you fight the same werewolf again on your next turn. You cannot move on until you've defeated the werewolf. All right, here's his strength. His strength is eight to my 10. 11, actually, in battle with this, the ax. So 11 to, ten, 11 to eight. Here's for the troll. Here's for the werewolf and it looks like that'll be a 12 for the werewolf and in fact a 15 for the troll so he wins oh boy the uh, thief is really sweating now here we go oh it's only a one and now he advances to the valley of fire yeah. he 
can end up needing you, so. Oh. All right, and now the thief gets one more shot at him, and he makes him lose a life. Oh no, but the troll has made it unbelievably all the way into the crown of command, and now the thief may be screwed. Potentially. All right, so the troll, now that there's two characters on the crown of command, they duke it out. Each of their turns, they attack the other. Troll just advanced there, so his first move is to attack the thief. And the troll, as I said, has a strength of 11 in battle. The thief has 3, 4, 5, 6 only. <laughs> but he has armor, so if the thief, if the troll tries to just take a life, well, it might be more advantageous for the troll to get rid of his armor first before taking his life. So, it's 11 to 6. The thief's going to hope for the best. Troll. 12. Thief. 10. Troll wins. And he takes the armor. Now, Thief attacks back with 6 to. Or maybe he should have done something else, but I'm just going to do that. Anyway, Thief attacks back with his strength of 6 still to 11. Thief. Troll. Troll dominates. And this time the troll takes the helmet just so there's no way this guy can defend. Alright, troll attacks. Thief defends. Troll definitely wins once again, and this time he's just gonna straight up make him lose a life. Now, thief hoping for a miracle. Six to six, that would indicate the troll wins again, and that's another life lost. And now the troll attacks back at the thief. And, ooh, this might be interesting, because that's 11 plus 3 is 14, and that is 6 plus... 6 is 12, so actually it's not interesting at all. Mathematically, the, probably the troll would have won every time. Just about, unless there was a standoff. But anyway, unbelievably, the thief has been defeated! He made a quick run for the crown, but was defeated by the troll who made an epic comeback, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. What a game. And so, the thief is dead. The troll stands alone on the crown of command. Thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll do more of this in the future, maybe with some expansions, maybe actually with some friends to play with. But I hope you enjoyed watching the basic overview and rundown of this game. Also, along with some fun commentary and uh, good times. Thanks for watching.